Welcome back to the 2013 League of Legends All-Star Weekend live from Shanghai, China. We're just moments away from the All-Star Team Tournament Finals between the Chinese LPL All-Stars and the Korean LCL team. But first, I'd like to welcome the evil geniuses, Jungle Snoopy, to the interview lounge. First of all, Snoopy, you were watching that last game. Give us your, your breakdown. How do you think that, well, we know how it went in the end, but what were your opinions? Start with, starting with game one, obviously, was a bit of a one-sided affair for the Koreans. I feel like game one, um, I would have liked to have seen St. Vicious uh, capitalize on that early kill that Scar got top. If he could manage to do that, I think it would have been a little bit better. The problem was that Doublelift got caught a bit too much by Madlife. Like, Madlife's an exceptional player, but he got caught a bit too much by those hooks in mid lane. If he didn't get, that didn't happen, I feel like Saint could have played the map a bit more and then focused on getting Scarath, like letting Rise power up basically, but didn't get a chance to do that. And then in that second map, uh, I guess they would have banned out Rundle, Rumble, but the Koreans banned out Rumble themselves, but there's no banning them out, apparently, because even though they built, kind of, they had a better game, but they just couldn't get it. I think that the one thing, uh, basically the, the guys wanted um, Kha'Zix, like NA thought that Korea would take Kha'Zix, but they didn't take it, so somehow they read like uh, the NA plan and didn't take the Kha'Zix. Um, and that was one of their biggest strategies, like take Kha'Zix, but they never did it. Um, so basically Korea read them really well. Um, and this, the second game, I feel like they got the, the early advantage bot lane um, when they caught out Ambition. Um, Saint and Expecial had a really good follow-up and they caught out Ambition, but they never capitalized on that early game advantage that they got. Why do you think the strong points lie in this Korean team? I mean, which we, they almost don't look like they're an all-star team that have just been put together. They look like a coordinated unit that have been playing together for months and months, maybe, I don't know, maybe you could even say years, the way that they are. Where does that strength come from straight away? It's, well, the, individually, the players are exceptionally, well, like, very, very talented. Um, all the players here are. But you can see it in the Asian teams especially that they just seem to click together way better than the, the European or the North American team. And I'm not sure what it's down to. Is it just the kind of environment that they're in, that they just focus a lot more, maybe? But uh, it's definitely noticeable in the, in, in the games. Maybe broadening this a bit to the rest of the season that's coming up. You've had a lot of experience playing teams all over the world. We felt that, do you feel that the gap is just as big as it was last season between the North American and European scene and the rest of the world? I wouldn't have said there was that big a gap last year. I think you're doing a bit of an yeah. injustice there. Um, it was like, well, we had top four finishes uh, for Europe, but um, I think this surprised me a little bit. I expected Europe to do a little bit better. Even though they didn't get as much practice as they really should have for an event like this, um, it did surprise me that not in North America coming out, they, they definitely did bring, bring their A game and uh, almost taking, the, they had that leads against China in like the games yesterday as well. Like it surprised me quite a bit. So I hope, I hope this wakes up EU a little bit. Um, I think it will. Like the second split is really serious. We only have two spots for Worlds. We don't even have a buy in the groups anymore. Like we need to step up our game. And does it, that, that obviously makes it harder for, for you. I mean, that's, that's obviously why you're here in China, to, to watch this and support Europe so that, you know, maybe your LCS summer split would actually become easy because the fact is we're not going to have that extra spot. The top-seeded team is not going to go through uh, straight through into the playoffs. They're going to have to play through the group stage and what have you. So that's actually really, really difficult. And that makes your job in the next three or four months, obviously starting a dream act on June 15th for the first weeks of the summer split, much harder. Well, speaking from our point of view in Evil Geniuses, we had a strong, a strong start to the, the first split and then like a bad mid split and we finished strong at the end of it, but we still only got uh, top three and that's not going to be enough to get us to Worlds. We have to be top two. So it's really, really competitive at this. And there's all these new teams that have came in in the, new, the second split the, or the summer split. It's going to be really, really tough, and I think, and the only I get back on June the, the fourth, and we have nine days or something to prepare for uh, the start of the season. That's really, really intense. So, and all the teams are going to experience this, the, the Americans and us. Don't you think you should be cutting your holiday shorter then? <laughs> yeah, I need a break at some point. It's the <laughs> I need to see the Great Wall of China. It's it's too nice. Well, you've got Hadrian's Wall in Scotland. I'm not sure why you need to come to China to see a big wall like that. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure it quite compares. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks a lot, Snoopy. One final question here, a short one. China or Korea to win the tournament? I'm going to give it to China. I'm going to say China's going to take it. Home, home field advantage, I think they've got, they're definitely going to take this one. Well, thanks a lot for joining us and uh, enjoy the rest of the tournament here. We're going to send it down to Jet now over in Replay Central.
there was a little hiccup there. You guys hear is the all-star game. Korea really out savvied North America. This was risked from the first blood. Let's watch how they walk around. First off, you can see Prey was scouting that brush in advance with his Piltover Peacemaker. When it didn't hit, they realized that Dyrus was not in that brush, so they knew he couldn't check him. That's when Madlife preps the hook, gets the crowd control, they stack it just right, are able to get first blood. So that was the first really good tactical move that Korea made in this game. And as Snoopy was saying, the overall skill of a lot of these guys was pretty close. It was just either coordination or tactical savvy that carried it through. And in this second clip is no way better of explaining it because Korea, in the second clip, realized that when they took the Baron, there were so many wards in the river that they would have been able to jump across. So really, the tactical savvy of this team, if we could get to the Baron clip, let's roll it right from here because we can start talking through with it. North America had been afraid of Korea this entire time. So North America, if you can look at the mini-map, had all the river warded, and Korea knew that. But they also knew that three of them could jump over this wall and then Prey would be able to shoot it in from behind because he has extended range with Caitlyn. Aside from Tristana, the only AD carry that can attack it the entire way. That play really set the game into a new direction and they didn't even have to team fight for it. They just had knowledge of the map, they had faith in themselves, and they knew what the North American team didn't know. That entire time, Korea one step ahead of North America and that's why they get to face China in the finals. Let's send it back to Freakin' River the Desk. Thank you very much, Ja. And now let's head to the Twitter sphere. It's all time to answer your all-star questions. And the first question is wisely asking, why do you think North America didn't ban Thresh? It's really a matter of priority. Certainly Mad Life Thresh is super good. And if I were there, I probably would have done it myself because I'm alarmist like that. But at the same time, think about their other bands. You get, like, if they do that, right? Right, exactly. It's like, Ambition's open. Jace. Yeah, you don't want to let that one through. Okay. Push and fade. Unfortunately, Skara can't play it very well. So even on blue side, they're still forced to ban at the North American squad. Uh, and in like, tell me with a straight face, you're not going to ban Lee Sin from Insect. That one's not going anywhere. So they decided that Thresh was the lesser of the four evils. Yeah. And they said, you know, we're going to let that one go through. And that's that's just accredited to the All Star, the Korean All Star team in their champion pool, right? Yeah. Can't ban it out. So Reggie Mope asks, how do you think nerves play into individual performances? Uh, it can be a lot. It can absolutely be gigantic. Your arms are shaking. You actually don't click very well. Absolutely. Your, your brain isn't there. Like, I've had days where I, like, there's a big day ahead of me. Like, NA playoffs are starting, and I can't go to bed the night before. And I'm like, great, I'm casting on two hours of sleep. And, you know, these guys can have the exact same things happen to them. Um, that said, these guys have all been competing for a long time. Every one of them has had a ton of big stage experiences. So and to, I want to say these guys aren't getting affected too much. And to bring out an example to that, we just heard a special yesterday talking that D-Man said, you know, everybody would have thought you were MVP for those games of the day. And he was saying to himself, I was in my own head, and I felt like I was dropping the ball multiple times. So performance was affected a bit, but they can still pull through it in some instances. He picked up that awesome first blood. So. It's, it's, it goes both ways depending on where the adrenaline's flowing at the time. So the next question at Mezzamit asks, which league caster would you choose as your partner if you were in a 2v2? Absolutely. So uh, guys, keep those questions coming. We're at LOL Esports. Use the hashtag All Star. No, we didn't plan that. And we could read your questions later on in today's show. So speaking of later today, Remember that immediately following the last game in the team tournament finals, we will have the world premiere of the League of Legends cinematic, A Twist of Fate. We wanted to show our appreciation to the amazing League of Legends community. We're very excited to share this brand new cinematic with all you guys. Absolutely. But first, it's the All-Star Team Tournament Finals. The Chinese LPL and Korean LCL All-Stars battle for the title and an extra spot in the Season 3 World Playoffs. The 2013 League of Legends All-Star Weekend will return right after these messages. Stick around.